our first speaker for this final session will be familiar with a lot of you guys. He's the founder of DNM Research, Woo! as well as a regular conference uh, contributor. To be as a presenter, the chair on the committee, or simply on the dance floor. You may recall from last night. And his ongoing research to find out what they think our partners want. Here is Derek Jones with his third installment. Oh, beautiful people. Can you hear me? Yeah. Excellent, excellent. We are going to talk about love. Woo! 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 <laughs> so, we're going to talk about love, but we're also going to talk a bit about a methodology. Really, what we're going to talk about today is what X wants from Y, right? And, and I love to use uh, love as an example to do that because. I think in our industry, the most important question that we that we, we are asked is how choosers choose, right? I see that in every brief. It might just be me, but for me, it is all about how choosers choose. So today's presentation is uh, third in a series where we look at uh, how people choose partners. So we're talking about life partners here today, ladies and gentlemen. Just need to clarify that up front. It does come with a warning. This presentation, it's dangerous by design. Yeah, it's going to include adult themes, it's going to include sexual content, coarse language, probably by me, and it's going to have politically sensitive material. So if that's not you, probably time to leave. No? Okay. So basically we've got all the good stuff here, yeah? Now, this is a pretty hot topic right now, I think everybody knows how hot this topic is. So I am standing up here with a fair bit of apprehension, I must say. Uh, almost as scared as I was back in 2010 when I, uh, in Melbourne, stood in front of a room full of women as a man, trying to tell them what women really want from men. So today, I'm standing up here as a straight man, telling you about what gay and bi men want from men. So, I'll probably trip up, I'll probably get something wrong, I ask that you be forgiving, uh, and I'd also, on that matter, just like to put a big thanks out to my colleague and dear friend, uh, Nick Kotsimides, who has helped me in this process and helped me to, to, to uh, work my way through and navigate through how I should tell this story today. So, big thanks. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a work in progress. This is uh, the third instalment um, around uh, love uh, that I'm going to be speaking about today, and it has become a bit of a life's work. I had to start somewhere, and I started with women because I like women. <laughs> and I wanted to know. And then it made sense to do uh, the men's study, the straight men's study. And, and now it makes sense to, to move on and, and keep building our knowledge base here and to do uh, gay and bi men. And we hope uh, ultimately to continue this, this journey and do gay and bi women as well. And then one of those, it's a few more letters I think in that acronym. So if you'll have me back. Now, as you can imagine, the press loves this stuff. They go absolutely nuts for it, right? Uh, and, and the last two studies have kind of went a little bit all over the world and viral. And the thing that they love the most, or they keep up with this, is, is strangely, because it's like, duh, that, that we underestimate the potency and power of, of sexual and physical attraction. Like, who would have thought? Who would have thought that women are actually sexually attracted to men? Yeah? And who would have thought that men love boobs and bumps? <laughs> Who would have thought that? Uh, interestingly, uh, if you want to see those other studies, you can, you can look at them on our YouTube channel. The What Women Want But Won't Necessarily Tell You has had 8,000 views today. What Men Want has had 172. <laughs> <laughs> no one gives a fuck, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what Men Want. <laughs> That's the finding in itself, as we say in the research game. So, how do we do it? What are we, what are we talking about here today? So, you know, uh, psychology uh, tells us that people aren't that great at introspecting and, you know, working out why they do things, yeah? There's cognitive biases, there's all sorts of things going on. So what, basically what we're doing here is we're using a stated metric and we're going to look at what people say is important, in this case, uh, gay and bi men. I'm going to compare it to the features of men that they're attracted to or not attracted to. When you do that, you compare those two things, you get like a bunch of different classifications. You get uh, attractors that match, which are core attractors. Just going to do a quick thing, hang on. A little bit dry there, ladies and gents. 
you get uh, overstated attractors, which are what we call areas of compromise. You get understated attractors, which are, is my favourite category, which is the areas of delight. And you'll, you'll love that slide. That's the money slide. There's detractors that match are core detractors, and of course you get the flip side, you get overstated detractors or areas of tolerance, and you get the opposite of delight, you get absolute disgust. Now, it's pretty easy to work out how we do the stated metric. That's basically you know, a standard 10 point scale or whatever scale you want to use, but it's basically, is this a turn on or a turn off? How do we do the derived metric? So with the derived metric, what we basically do is we take a bunch of, uh, these are what we call our celebrity uh, partner candidates. So these guys were qualitatively derived as either good or bad. We get an attraction score associated with them, and then we get them to associate them with each of the attributes that are in the stated importance list, right? We put them in a box and we jig them around a little bit, and we come up with a mean score. So basically what we're saying is the proxy score, or well, let's say he's strong and masculine, all men that were seen as strong and masculine had, a, had an average score of 7.3. So that becomes our proxy for uh, strong and masculine. We'll repeat that across all of the metrics that we have in the study. Let's go back and just have, I don't have time to go through the other two studies, but I think it's important for contextually maybe just to have a little bit of a look at what we found uh, back then. For women, their core, their core needs was all around loving and caring. For guys, it was about having a, oh, I never said bird. <laughs> having a bird that's a good sort. <laughs> uh, areas of compromise was all around status. Areas of compromise for, for, for a guy was that she's independent and confident. And those beautiful areas of delight were attraction, uh, sexual attraction in particular, and compatibility. And for guys, it was sexy and compatible, which include things like bums, boobs, and legs. And then on the flip side of that, we had must not have was for women, it was inconsiderate. For men, it was negative and she does not care. Uh, the toleration areas were self-centeredness for women, bossy with vices for the men, and unaligned, flawed and inept, and I'll explain that a little bit more around that later, and unsexy and repulsive was the areas of disgust for men. But we're not here today to talk about straight people. We're here today to talk about bi and gay men. So let's do that, shall we? You ready? So the first thing we had to do is we had to find out what those attractors and what those detractors are, right? So we don't use the same attributes across these th these three studies. We go and we do we do a, a, like a quasi coal exercise using smoke and ending questions. So we went out to uh, hundred uh, gay and bi men, and I must stress this is gay and bi men mixed together um, for a number of reasons. I think you could probably do analysis of these two streams separately, and that would be a, a good thing to do. But essentially, uh, time, time constraints, sample constraints, we put them together and we are all talking about attraction to men. So we asked them what's most important in a partner and they, they typed it in. Who fits this in the public eye? What's a real turn off in a partner? And who fits this in the public eye? And we got uh, hundreds of responses from that. And this is just a, a quick look at a, at a word cloud. So uh, they did mention looks that came through really strongly and personality. And if we look, oops, sorry, go back. Uh, Sorry, and uh, it helps a lot if your name's Ryan. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Gosling, Zach Efron, Tom Cruise, he appears on all these lists, good and bad. Doesn't matter whether you're male or female. And of course, uh, Chris Pratt and Brad Pitt. On the flip side, we get the usual kinds of things in the, in the, the turn-offs, uh, you know, sort of arrogant, rude, aggressive, uh, he'd been on drugs, that kind of thing. And of course, yeah, who's there? I can hear you all laughing. Yeah, Donald Trump kind of uh, <laughs> sticks out there like a sore thumb. But also, there's Tom Cruise again, Justin Bieber, Anthony Kalea, Lloyd George. Pretty interesting. So then what we did is we, we, we uh, had to then distill this down into a list of attributes. And we ended up with 62 attributes, 31 positive attractors and 31 detractors. This took days, I've got to say. This was one of the most <laughs> challenging things we've ever done. Uh, and we'd use the planets and moons process, which we like to use, uh, planning tools. So we just kind of chunked them up in the themes and then finally distilled them down until we got our final list, which you can see there. Now, of course, we also had to um, find some celebrities, some male celebrities that they could rate. They were either good or bad. And the, on the good list, there was over 100 males. So, you know, there's a lot of diversity. And we found that with, with the men and women. It was about 60 guys on the, on the, uh, on the detractors list. Who wants to play who's hot, who's not? <laughs> Anyone? Yeah. Give me a name. Hugh Jackman. Jackman, thanks. <laughs> yeah, 6.3. Give me another name. 
Ricky Martin, thank you. Point two. Oh, you love that you're playing ball here, just as I anticipated. Give me another name. Chris Hemsworth. You mean Jake Gyllenhaal? Six point three. Okay, let's let's get serious. Someone said Chris Hemsworth. One out of six. Yeah, seven. Who's not hot? Yeah, he's not very hot. Clive Palmer, did you say? Yes. I've forgotten the order now. Boy George. Two point nine. Anthony Mundine, and of course Donald. <laughs> Thanks for playing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, so then we went to stage two, which was, uh, we went back to 400 uh, game by men, around half-half in the sample, thanks to the, the, the very generous people at Lightspeed who donated some sample to us, very grateful for that, and friends at Octopus who gave us a nice discount. Uh, we did have to build the, build the sample. It's a split sample because we've got so many attributes, so they basically did half the attributes and half the celebrities each, yeah? So three simple questions. We showed them those photos of those, those guys, um, we tried to make all those photos look the same, thanks to the wonderful Emre, who also did this presentation, which is absolutely beautiful, I have to say. Uh, so we showed these people and we said, is, is, this, is this person uh, attractive to you or not, right? Simple. How appealing are return off each of these attributes? And which of these attributes apply to these well-known people? So question two is the state of importance. We combine question one and question three to get out the right importance. And also we sort of did play this a little bit, but that's the, that's the full list uh, in terms of guys that were above average. So you've got Hemsworth, Gosling, Jackman, Pratt, Gillen Hall. Gillen Hall, I've been practicing that. I don't think I got it right, did I? Um, <laughs> interestingly, the scores that we got here are sort of like sixes and sevens, that's the highest. And when we did this with straight men and women, we were getting scores closer up to uh, the eight mark. So that was kind of interesting. I'm sort of thinking as a researcher, why, why could that be? And I, I guess the only reason I could come up with was that, you know, these guys are not necessarily known. Some, some are known to be straight, some are known to be out, some are... There's a question mark. Let's never see. Most unappealing public life figures, again, uh, Donald Trump, uh, Clive Palmer. When we did this with the men and women, the politicians were all down the bottom of the list, so no surprises there. So what was the top ten things that gay and bi men said was important to them? Number one. We enjoy being together, 8.8, pretty important. And just as a point of navigation, if it's got a pink dot next to it, that's something that, that they have in common with straight women. And if it's a blue dot, that's something that they have uh, in common with, with uh, straight men. If it's in a box, it's unique. So he's loving, caring, and understanding, that was unique. I'm attracted to him sexually, had that in common with straight men. He loves and respects me for who I am, that was common across both gender persuasions. We have chemistry, that was unique. He's loyal uh, and reliable, that was unique. He's respectful and has good manners, that was uh, shared by the women. He's kind and caring to others, that was shared across all. He's down to earth and easy going, shared with males. And he has an attractive personality. So you can see there are, there are some common things there um, with straight men, some common things there with straight women, and you can see the list there in your package where I have a look at that. And if you want to have a look at all of them, they are also and then on the, on the reverse of that, the, the bottom, uh, well, bottom, I can't believe I'm talking about bottoms already. <laughs> I will be talking about bottoms later. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we go. He's listing up. <laughs> okay, let's refocus everybody. Top 10 things that gay and bi men uh, don't want in their partners. Dishonest, unfaithful, untrustworthy. That's pretty fair enough, I would have thought, right? And that was common across men and women. It's poor personal hygiene. Well, nobody wants that. He's superficial and fake. That was unique. He's angry or aggressive. He's selfish, egocentric, uh, conceited. He's loud or arrogant. That was shared across the board. He's boring and uninteresting. He's lazy and ambitious. No purpose in life was shared across both. He's controlling and possessing. He is bitchy. Came out in the top ten. And you can see there's, there, again, there, there are things that are common with uh, straight men and there are things that are common with straight women. And again, the detractors are all there in the, where I think the packs will go out at some stage, right? And, and we can have a look at that. But the question here is really, are they telling the truth? Do you like that? Yeah. That's really yeah. cool, isn't it? Don't ask me how that's done. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, so don't know. <laughs> so what's this polygraph all about? So basically what we do is we take those results of the stated attractors and the, and the derived attractors and we standardise them um, because they're collected in different ways, possibly scales being used differently. 
And then we plot them on a, on a distribution, so zero is, is the mean score. You can see there's big clusters up in the, in the top right hand corner. That's obviously all the attractors, and in the bottom, you can see that the detractors are clustering there as well. And you can see some of those things are close to the line, but there are some outliers as well. So there are clearly things that are understated uh, and overstated in terms of attractors, and there are overstated turn-offs and attributes, and that flips around, you have to be a little double jointed to work that one out. But a much better way of looking at this data is to actually put it on a spider chart. There was this aha moment in our office where Chris Cayley, uh, I think, here, said, why don't you put it on a, on a, on a spider chart, mate? And I went, oh yeah, pretty good. It works, it works a trick. And that's the polygraph was born. Right? So when you look at that, you can see that there are, there are clearly areas that align, attractors and detractors. You can see that there are areas that are, that are understated, and you can see that there are areas that are overstated. So let's jump into... Uh, the attractors. So we're just going to look at the attractors for the moment. Firstly, where were they aligned? And this is really interesting. So for gay and bi men, what's really uh, important to them is that, that, that is about being on the same page, having the same interests, having the same beliefs, having the same values. But he also needs to be confident and, and have charisma, and he also needs to be fit and have, have an athletic body. That's a helpful thing as well. And he needs to be an attractive personality and someone who would love and respect me for who I am. So we've got love in there, but we've got this kind of alignment thing happening. For straight men, it was she's a good sort, and there's some of the attributes that went in there. And for women, it was all about uh, loving and caring. But let's go to, firstly, to the attractor that was overstated. So this, you can think of this as what would be nice to have, all right? What do we got? He's comfortable in his own skin. He's intelligent. He has, he's got the money. He's independent. He's respectful and has good manners. He has a steady, well-paid job. He's well-educated. He has a good sense of humour. Uh, he is gay. He is loyal and reliable. I'm not touching that. <laughs> He's the perfect guy, ladies and gentlemen, right? This is what we all want. Well, we'll see that we, uh, we do have this in common. Um, but we're willing to compromise on those things. And do you see a lot of pink dots there? There's a lot of pink dots there. Women were very similar, and they talked about they want a guy that has some kind of status in terms of job, education, and the rest of it. For, for straight men, it was a bit different. It was more around being independent and confident. This is the money slide, ladies and gentlemen. Apparently, I say ladies and gentlemen a lot too, so <laughs> I'm going to try and not do that. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, this, is the, this is the wow chart. This is the areas of delight. These are the things that gay by men completely <laughs> understate. Okay? But you can see some pretty big things there, right? <laughs> Number one. He's got a great ass or bubble butt. We call that an asset. He told me not to do that as well. <laughs> he is hot. He's got a good size appendage. <laughs> Can't make butter with a toothpick, ladies. <laughs> and gents. I'm attracted to him sexually. <laughs> he would have chemistry. He, I don't have to call him a torpedo for nothing. He could be my best friend. He's my sexy bestie, right? That's what this is all about. And you can see our straight guys also mention you know, specific physical attributes like thumbs, boobs, and legs. And our women were more around you know, attraction and compatibility. Have we gone too far? I feel like I might have gone too far. I'm sensing it. Okay, there's a flip side to this, and we've got two minutes. Is that, is that a clock? That's a clock, isn't it? <laughs> so, here for a reason? It's going backwards. Yeah. Gay by men. Core detractors. This is where they lined up. His past would be complicated. He'd be loud or arrogant. He's effeminate. He's bitchy. He has poor social conversation skills. He's not openly out. He's a bit of a drama queen. That is the core, the core negative, the core detractors. The straight men, oh boy, did they have a lot to complain about. Look at that list here. I couldn't even fit them in bullet points, right? So she's negative, she doesn't care, she's a bitch, you know, right, 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 right. But the straight woman is like, he's, he's just inconsiderate, he's always at the bar, he gambles, he, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So that was a buying in itself. And then we get to prefer not to have, so these are areas potentially of toleration. And the first one there is, he's not single, I'm not touching that. <laughs> Second one is, he would want a family and relates to children well. This is an interesting one, potentially controversial. And you can see it's pretty high on the, it's almost on the attractor list, right? So it's kind of in the middle. It's only just fallen into, into, this, into this section. Um, 
So it could be actually an error of compromise or toleration. But we know that it is measurably more difficult for a gay and bi couples to, to have children, right? So that's probably why it why falls where it does. He has addictions. He has poor personal hygiene. We'll tolerate that. The dishonest, unfaithful, and untrustworthiness. He works too much. He's lazy, unambitious, with no purpose in life. He would only be looking for sex. He's compromised, and he has vices. Not dissimilar to the straight men, except they're not worried so much about being compromised, they just don't want bossy. Right? But you can have vices, you can smoke, you can go shopping, you can do that kind of thing. And for women, it was all about self-centeredness. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, I'll say that again. Turn a negative and positive. Well, stop right there. Here are the areas of disgust. He talks too much. He's overweight. He would not be good in bed. He swears too much. He does not look after himself physically. He is a slob. Slobbingly loud, overweight, bad in bed. <laughs> Lots of blue dots there, as you can see. Very similar to straight men. It was all about the areas of disgust was unsexy and repulsive. She's overweight, she's no good in bed, she talks too much, she has an unattractive voice. For straight women, it's a little bit simpler. Uh, unaligned, so you have different values to me, that's a, that's a deal breaker. A fit, it's flawed, you've got a physical characteristic that they just can't get past, that's it, no, deal breaker, don't like that. And poor social and conversation skills. So there you have it, quick look at the archaeology, uh, architecture then of gay and bi love. So we saw that the core must-haves was aligned and attractive. The compromise areas was the perfect guy, which was very similar to straight women. The areas of delight is my sexy bestie. The drama queen was the, the category uh, chunked up area of must not have. Compromise with vices was an area of tolerance, and we've just seen slop was an area of disgust. So we started this conversation uh, talking about love, and I think it's appropriate that we finish talking about love. We've seen that love is different. When we look at straight men, we look at straight women, we see there are differences. So we've seen differences here again today. So love is love, ladies and gentlemen, even when it's different, said it again. Gay and bi men are not that different to their straight counterparts. There are nuances, but they're not that different to what we've seen between straight men and straight women. We all want loving partners. That comes through in all three studies. Straight women put a little bit more emphasis on loving and caring. Straight guys put a little bit more emphasis on loving and support. Pat me on the back. That's what guys want. While for gay, gay and bi men, it's more around loving uh, and more emphasis on being aligned on the same page and respect. We all look for that perfect partner with some nuances. In terms of work, ethic, education, money, manners, hygiene, all those things, but we're willing to compromise on some of those things if other things are present, such as assets. No? Stop. Same can be said about avoiding vices, such as addiction, self-centeredness, uh, dishonesty, all of which may be tolerated if present if other factors are present, because no one's perfect, right? The most important thing that we have found is we are all subject to this implicit bias of physical attraction, and that trumps everything. So what's the problem, ladies and gentlemen? Let there be love.